Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hey friends, now I am going to talk about the types of hybridization uh, that is on uh, mixing or recasting of orbitals that takes place. So in the previous lecture we have talked about the hybridization and we have talked about the concept behind that. And uh, now let us understand the first kind of hybridization or the first kind of the uh, mixing and recasting of the atomic orbitals that is sp3 hybridization. So let us talk about it. So now we are going to talk about the sp3 hybridization. So what is sp3 hybridization? Let me give you a short idea. That is, uh, it is basically the involvement of uh, one s orbital of the same atom and three p orbitals of the same atom, and they will mix each other with each other in such a way that uh, they will uh, form the same number of uh, the atomic orbitals, or that atomic orbitals are basically known as uh, hybrid orbitals, and that uh, mixing or recasting of that atomic orbitals are basically known as the sp3 hybridization, and this process is basically known as sp3 hybridization. So now let us understand the definition of it, and uh, we'll give it a that is. Uh, an example and from which we could be able to know that is uh, what is actually uh, the hybridization and how does it take place so let us talk about it with the help of its uh, definition first so let us understand that is the process of mixing and recasting of one s orbital so this is the one that is main thing one s orbital and three p orbitals of the same atom having nearly the same energy having nearly the same energy because as we know that the s and p uh, suppose uh, like that of the previous example that we have taken that is uh, in hybridization that uh, the concept that we have taken we have did about the beryllium and in that case we have got to know that 2s orbital has the similar energy with that of the 2p orbital and they almost have the same energy and that's the reason that uh, this point it clearly indicates that uh, the s orbital and the 3p orbitals that are going to combine or that are going to mix with each other uh, they should have at least the same energy the same energy to form four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals yes the reason behind that is because in this case basically one s orbital is being involved and three p orbitals are being involved so making it basically four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals will be arranged and they will mix with each other and that's the reason that only four hybrid orbitals uh, or this atomic orbitals that we are going to talk about that is basically the hybrid orbitals that would be formed and they will have equal energy so not only they will have equal energy but yes, they will have uh, maximum symmetry along with that of the definite orientation in space. Definite orientation in space, it means that they will have a particular geometry, they will have a particular angle. And that is how the hybridization takes place. And this is what uh, I want to talk about. So this was, we say, sp hybridization. But it is very much incomplete if we can't give an example of it. So if we give an example, then it would be very much easy to us to understand that uh, how the sp 3 hybridization takes place. So let us move on with the example. So now let us talk about uh, the sp3 hybridization an example that is formation of methane molecule so let us talk about it so this is what i am going to talk about that is how the formation of ch4 molecule takes place in terms of the hybridization so in ch4 basically methane we know that the central atom is basically the carbon so the first thing that we can do is we can uh, give the electronic configuration for carbon so it is very easy to give that is the electronic configuration for carbon 6 and this 6 indicates the atomic number it can be written as that is 1s2 2s2 2p2 so according to the uh, we could say like uh, we can make the hybrid orbitals also uh, an indication for that so because this 2s and 2p they are, are present in the outermost uh, uh, shell or they are basically the outermost shell so therefore we could make the orbitals arranged in such a way that because of s it will consist of only one orbital well, that of P subshell will consist of basically three orbitals. So this is what we have made, and uh, let us uh, that is insert the electrons that are uh, present on that particular subshell. So talking about the S uh, subshell, it consists of two electrons. So therefore, I am uh, rearranging it in such a way that uh, I will occupy here the two electrons. So this is the two electrons that are being occupied over here, and here also in P orbital there are basically two electrons. So this is the thing that we have. Uh, made it here but the carbon is the one which is basically it can form uh, four bonds but meanwhile looking at this electronic configuration according to the valence bond thing only two bonds are being possible for the carbon to make but in actual practice it is not that so so the thing that we are going to do is we are going to yes we are going to do the steps of the hybridization that we have uh, did in our previous lecture and the first step in that was excitation so we'll excite the electron and let us make it that uh, and let's see that how many uh, 
bonds or how many bonds the carbon will form and how many vacant or unpaired electrons does an or orbital will have so what the thing that we are going to do is because uh, let me mention in this case that is this is the ground state that we mentioned over here and the thing that we have to do is we have to energize it or we have to excite it so after excitation let's see what happens so in this case we will observe that uh, these are the atomic orbitals that will be for uh, the 2s along with that of the 2p and the thing that we have to do is we have to excite the electrons so but we know that there are four uh, that is uh, atoms that are been uh, that will form bond with that of the carbon so obviously there should be four unpaired electrons that are present on the carbon then only it will be able to uh, that is to form a bond between the respective hydrogen atoms that are present in the methane molecule so obviously this electron would be the one that could be uh, excited because as you can see that it is a pair while the other two are physically unpaired so if i accept this electron obviously this electron will be more towards the last one last orbital of p so that is removed but meanwhile here only one electron will be remained so this is the one electron that is going to be and this two were originally present as it is so i'm mentioning you this two black one just as to make you understand that this green one is the one that has been uh, that is the one electron has been uh, given away to that of the pz and uh, yes talking about the pz let us understand that uh, we should give the specific name of uh, the orbitals also uh, talking about this one this is basically the s orbital i will mention it this way that is s orbital talking about the first box or the first orbital that we could see is basically px and that of this is py and the last one is of pz so this is how we have that is the first we have followed the first step and we have excited the electrons and uh, now the next step yes the next step is basically mixing and recasting of the atomic orbitals so here we have got the atomic orbitals that is one for s one for px one for py and one for uh, pz and now basically they will be uh, forming uh, the mixing and during this mixing basically we could say that is uh, as you can see four atomic orbitals are being combined with each other so that's the reason that uh, it will form four equivalent uh, hybrid orbitals so how they will form let me give you a space over here i'll come back this uh, in a few while so talking about which are basically mixing actually talking about the first one that is s orbital and uh, for which uh, s orbital we know that is s orbital is the one which has basically spherical chain so this is the s orbital of the carbon so now this uh, s orbital is basically combining with that of px py and pz so let me give an idea that uh, how they are being combined so talking about the px one so px orbital of the carbon that i am talking about so Consider this as the px orbital of carbon. So this is px and talking about the next one that is py. So I am making it in a separate way so as you could understand in a better way. So plus uh, this is py. I am just making a rough diagram just as to understand it is not uh, that much perfect but uh, perfect for understanding. And uh, let us move on with the next one that is this is PY and now it will be combined with that of the PZ also. So PZ basically it will be uh, mutually every every axis that has been orbitals that are basically they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So therefore this is on x axis, this is on y axis. We could say in that manner. And one which I can cannot draw in a three D manner, but in a two D space I could make it in this way. So this is something known as PZ orbitals, and each of the uh, orbital consists of one electrons. So now each orbital which consists of actually uh, one electron now they will basically they mix with each other so now i'm talking about the second step that is mixing of uh, orbitals so after the mixing what will happen is one s will be combined with that of 3p so as to form the hybrid orbitals so in this case as you could see that they have a particular shape they have particular axis and uh, orientation as you could see but uh, after mixing they'll form new orbitals yes this happens and the new orbitals that i could uh, mention in this way is basically they will be different from that of the original orbitals that you would see over here and here basically after mixing i will write over here after mixing the new orbitals are being generated and four new atomic orbitals they are known as basically hybrid orbitals they are being uh, formed and that are basically So this is the rough diagram that I have explained in this case. So 
just to discuss in this way don't go with the diagram it is not that much good but uh, it uh, indicates that uh, basically it is a tetrahedral geometry talking about this let me explain about this diagram also that is this is the one uh, which will uh, this is basically 3d uh, diagram that i have made over here and uh, in this case basically the borders that have been formed in this case is basically this is 109 degree 20 minutes so similarly for every board that uh, or every uh, angle that it makes it will have the same kind of uh, angle and uh, talking about this thing this three uh, lower loops as you could see they are arranged in such a manner that uh, the two are in the in your side while the last one is in my side so this is the 3d arrangement and this talking about this one this is the one which is present above so this is how basically the arrangement is been and uh, now we could say that uh, this is the new hybrid orbitals and in this case as you could see a particular loop or uh, uh, in this case basically uh, this is the one which is made up of obviously sp3 so that's the reason this orbital that i have made over here is basically known as hybrid atomic orbital that is basically known as sp3 hybrid orbital even this will be sp3 hybrid orbital so as all those as we could see over here so this is particularly for carbon only because the carbon atom uh, was the one that has mixed up its own atomic orbital and formed a new kind of hybrid orbitals that you could see over here so the job is not been done yet as you could see that this part was remaining so now in this case basically this s this px this py this pz they will combine with each other so as to form basically sp3 hybridization so here we see the hybridization will take place and that is what we could see the geometry like this one and the most of the work has been done and now let us understand that uh, what is the orientation here i have also explained about the orientation here and uh, that is basically the angle that it makes and uh, uh, the separation of the uh, atomic orbital they are arranged in such a manner that there will be no repulsion and that is what i want to talk about and uh, talking about uh, uh, that is uh, the energy level the s energy uh, or the s orbital will have a particular energy that of uh, px will have more or pz P, uh, py pz so there will be difference in this two energy or uh, atomic orbitals energy but meanwhile after when they are mixing we cannot say that uh, this orbital will be the more energetic this will be less no every orbital that are been formed over here they will have equal energy or equivalent energy that is what we have that is what we have learned in the concept of hybridization and this is it most of the work is built and only thing that we have to do is we have to involve the hydrogen atoms so let us go with that one so talking about the hydrogen there are basically hydrogen that is one we could uh, make the electronic configuration to, to be written as 1s1 and since it consists of only one uh, uh, subshell or we could say like the uh, orbital and uh, that orbital will consist of only one electron and since it is s orbital it will have a shape of uh, that is spherical so i am mentioning the atomic orbital of the hydrogen to be in this form the shape is of spherical form i am just drawing it in this manner so there are only not only one hydrogen you see there are four hydrogens so therefore four hydrogen or four spherical atomic orbitals would be involved so as to combine with that of uh, the hybrid orbitals that i could see over here so now we see the four hydrogen atoms will combine with uh, the hybrid carbon atom or atomic orbital of that and this is how we will see the structure of it so i'm just explaining a rough idea so this is the first p uh, sp3 hybrid uh, uh, atomic orbital of uh, the carbon this is the second one this is suppose the third one and this is something which is arranged in 3 diagram just make it turn aside and there will be also some kind of small loops here that i have not mentioned in the earlier one but yes there will be small loops over here also because mixing takes place in such a manner and that is what we could see over here but nothing to concern with this one and only this are the sp3 hybridized orbital of the carbon of carbon i would, I would say of carbon atom but meanwhile talking about the hydrogen hydrogen has spherical shape as you could see over here so that's the reason that uh, hydrogen uh, have an uh, atomic orbital uh, like spherical so now they will basically combine with that of carbon and we know that each sp3 hybrid orbital had consisted of one electron so one electron of carbon here 
I'm representing over here. But meanwhile, even the uh, I would say like hydrogen has one electron in its outer motion. So now here it is the one electron that is present for carbon and uh, hydrogen, and now they will form bond with each other. And this kind of bonding, because S is been combining with that of P, and we have discussed about the hybridization as well as the uh, uh, Overlapping the lecture which we had, uh, I have to for overlapping and in this case we have got to know that the sigma bond has been formed over here because of the uh, most of the overlapping takes place uh, between the sp3 uh, hybrid orbital of carbon and uh, s orbital of uh, the hydrogen so this kind of uh, uh, that is a bond that has been formed this will be very much strong and this bond is basically sigma bond so every bond that is being formed is basically sigma bond and the bond angle that I have uh, measured over here because of the orientation that we are talking about and it has been found to be basically I would write it over here that is the bond angle that has been formed is basically 109 degree 28 minutes so this is the geometry that we have but we have not clarified yet that what is the geometry that is involved so while looking at it in 3d manner we could see in this way but if you come if you imagine that suppose if these two uh, orbitals are in front of you uh, while this one is in towards my side and this one which is at the top loop of it as you could see and if I join it, it will be like that of a pyramid. And that's the reason the pyramid are been also known as basically tetrahedral. So therefore the geometry of this is tetrahedral geometry. With the bond angle of this one. And this is what we can draw the structure of uh, methane. And that is basically C H H. H. was a very simple thing that we have did today and uh, that's it that is what I want to talk about and uh, uh, meanwhile I hope you have understood that uh, this is a stable structure that has been formed but, but meanwhile if we follow the valence bond theory we would be not be able to draw this structure this stable structure and that is what hybridization plays a very important role in understanding not only the uh, bond angle or not only the shape but various details that could be given by particular molecule so this was an example of sp3 hybridization so that's it and there are further more that i'm going to talk about so i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope you'll share this video with the friends and don't forget to subscribe thank you so much